Welcome back to a nice relaxing teardown in between of that little nightlight here. And uh, yeah, it's a usual nightlight. It has a PIR uh, motion sensor here. And I probably guess it also contains or it must contain also some kind of light sensor because it has three settings and that is on then it will be on and off then it's off and auto and on auto it only should light up when it is dark and there is some motion however the brightness of the leds is really underwhelming uh, i'm here at a fixed exposure and uh yeah uh it's it's really really dark and also in the off po uh, on position it's obviously on in the off position it is off and in the auto position it is also on though there's no movement in front of the per sensor and uh, yeah i'm outside the range it simply stays on all the time if it is on auto and I don't know if you can see that, but that LED here, or all LEDs, are actually on. We are on auto. Now I'm going to the, sorry, off position and to auto again. So yeah, that's broken. And what do we do with broken things around here? We make them suffer some more <laughs> by taking them down. Anyways, uh, there's the first problem here in the form of security screws but uh well <clears throat> i don't feel like really repairing that uh it's probably just a broken blob sh chip inside there anyway so uh let's just drill that open i hope drilling out those holes here will separate the two plastic parts without the need of removing the screws So let's see if it comes apart now. Should be. There's really nothing holding it together anymore. Uh, maybe on that side. Yeah, I should have taken more off here. But it's really a uh, soft plastic. So yeah, <clears throat> here we go. Sorry, I was a little bit off screen. So here we have our mains AC connection. Oh, ho, ho, I see a board and it's full of stuff. Um, yeah, let's get that board out. No security screws there. There's a little, yeah, that's actually soldered on. Daughter board with a switch and a few little screws but that shouldn't be a problem so there's one little screw there's another little screw and there's a third little screw and now the whole thing should just come out without any further ado or at least i thought so Sorry, zooming out. There is obviously a trick of inserting it. Maybe a little snap in action. I don't think so. There's another little screw here that I can unscrew. But I think that only holds in the lens at the front it's struggling i can see another screw <laughs> but that's not how they assembled it uh okay of course it's possible that they soldered on some connections ah no here we go <clears throat> Okay, now I have everything. 
Now, just if you're wondering, that last screw here is for the whole lens assembly or holds the lens assembly here <clears throat> for the PIR motion detector in place. And then we have, oh gosh, then we have that little thingy here. Okay. <laughs> uh, that is actually also held in with a screw. Nice. And these are soldered on. Yeah, these are soldered on connections. Uh, let me snip that real quick. Actually, we can have a look at the board quite well without desoldering the AC mains connector here. Uh, first things you noticed are these blackened areas where the mains AC face and neutral comes in. That doesn't look too good. Otherwise, the parts here, including the uh, electrolyte, electrolytic capacitors, they look okay. Nothing out of the order. Just if you're interested in the type numbers here, I can zoom down a little bit more. So uh, C-A-I-N-E-B-O or zero, it's a zero probably, N-E-B-O. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, revision zero zero. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, other things of note here uh, on this side, uh, besides the uh, astounding number of electrolytic capacitors uh, for diodes, uh, probably a bridge rectifier. Uh, that's set uh, to so a xenodiode uh, for voltage stabilization, a second xenodiode. So we probably have two voltage rails here. And I, if I put it around here, you can read most of the markings, I guess. Can you? Yes. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, then our uh, PIR, so either pyrolytic infrared uh, detector or passive infrared detector and our little light sensor that looks like a photodiode or phototransistor and that's it and of course our uh, three LEDs here and again there was some short high current uh, occurrence here for a while and we can have a look at the back now. Uh, let me refocus. The back is all SMD, but uh, for this <laughs> glaringly big, and I think that's that's actually an X2 capacitor here. And I'm pretty sure this is uh, or was uh, powered by a capacitive dropper. Uh, I did a capacitive, capacitive dropper once uh, 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 card here, link in the description. And my best guess is we will test that, that that, that thingy here has no longer 0.47 microfarad. I guess it shorted for a short while and then it self-heat, uh, self-healed because these are metal foil capacitors, uh, XX2 type, so they are intended to fail open or fail at a yeah, smaller capacity. And that's uh, probably the reason the thing won't or isn't working anymore. And we also have here a mystery chip. I can't really see any markings. Uh, let me zoom down a little bit further. So that's actually a brand name ch uh, chip, uh, 324 uh, ST Microelectronics N003650. Hmm. 
And here's a close up of the, <laughs> yeah, w w with all the credentials you need for that thing to work safely, uh, X2 capacitor. And yeah, uh, an ST <laughs> electronics chip here for the whole shebang, uh, plus a real X2 capacitor uh, means that thing was probably not made in China. And if you're wondering what soft material the housing is made of, it's ABS-FR. So ABS, uh, okay. So your typical 3D printing material. Turns out that capacitor is still perfectly fine with 0.437 microfarads. So that didn't kill the thing. Okay, I probed the rectifier diodes and the Zener diodes, at least if they are still conducting, and they are with uh, 0.6 volts, what you would expect. And I also uh, checked that in Rush, I guess it's a 100 ohm uh, limiting resistor here directly connected to mains AC. Uh, it's still 100 ohm as it should be, so we need a new theory. Um, the darkened areas here where the AC mains cables are soldered in, that's just a very botchy soldering job, okay? That's my new theory, just yeah, heated up the board too much. And otherwise, uh, probably one of the... <laughs> Electrolytic capacitors aged too much and now the whole thing stopped working properly. Uh, yeah, I, I won't try to <clears throat> repair that. Uh, I already <laughs> messed up the housing, so there's really no point in that. That's it for today. I mean, I was really impressed by the complexity of the circuitry, but then this is a very old, I don't know how old, 10 years, 15 years, uh, nightlight. Uh, it's obviously, I already mentioned that before, not made in China, looking at uh, the engineering and the cost that went into that thing. That was when back in the day uh, such a nightlight would set you back uh, 20 euros. Nowadays it's more like uh, less than 10 euros if you buy a good European made new one and uh, I don't know, less than 5 euros if you buy uh, from a Chinese source by AliExpress or something. Ah, anyway, see you next time. Bye.